Hi everyone, welcome to another learning episode. Today I'll be sharing with you a new learning series in this YouTube channel and this is what we call the research writing series where I'm going to share practical tips and techniques on how to write some of the most important parts in our research manuscript. In today's episode, we will be sharing how we are going to write our research introduction using this technique. Without further ado, let's jump right into our discussion. There are a lot of techniques in terms of writing our research introduction. One of these techniques is the inverted pyramid structure technique. So as you can see, it looks like an inverted triangle where the first part of the structure contains a wider space while on the bottom part it has a narrower space because using this structure, we should start with writing the general information first moving on to a more specific one and then on the last part of your research introduction you're going to share the most specific information including the research locale and the purpose of your study this technique the inverted pyramid structure technique contains three elements or three parts the first part shows what is already known or these are the general information about your research study the second part shows the gap in knowledge basically the these are the information that are too little or that needs to be elaborated. Then the third part contains or shows how your study fills in the gap in knowledge. So let us discuss each of the parts. The first initial paragraphs of your research introduction should contain what is already known, how we are going to write it or how are you going to do it. Uh, first is we have to provide a strong statement that reflects your research subject area. I have here a sample of an introduction of a qualitative research titled Inclusive Senior High School Classroom with Students with Hearing Impairment. What I did in my first paragraph is I define first what is inclusive education. So I give a strong definition what inclusive education is so my audience will have a full grasp on what do I mean about inclusivity or inclusive education as a whole. This is how I did it. Here is my note. I have here my notes below. So let me read to you the strong statement that I did to reflect my research subject area. Inclusive education is when all students, regardless of any challenges, are placed in age-appropriate general education classes. Aside from giving a definition of what inclusive education is, I also establish the purpose of inclusive education so my readers or audience would identify why is the Department of Education pushing inclusivity inside the classroom. So I provided the purpose in the first paragraph. Pa lang. So inclusive education aims to provide high quality instruction, interventions, and supports that enable them to meet success in the core curriculum and then you provide the source or uh, the expert who says that finding or that definition right after you establish a strong statement about your research subject area the next thing that we're going to do is to explore the problem so the main problem with inclusive education is that although the department of education keeps on pushing inclusivity inside the classroom however in regular schools we don't have enough teachers who have special education units i put it in the last statement of my first paragraph the problem so the problem is regular schools with or without trained sped teachers shall provide educational services to children so basically this is where the problem creeps in because we don't have enough sped teachers and most of our teachers do not have special education training and once we already had given her a strong statement about the research study and we also had explored the problem the next thing that we're going to do is to proceed to our main body this part we are going to show now the gap in knowledge so how are we going to show the gap the first thing that we're going to do is to show the current data actually there are polarizing results about inclusive education a lot of educational experts say that it has positive impact while also there are educational experts who tell us that inclusive education does not automatically have meaningful results 
So there are contradicting opinions about inclusive education. So what I did in the main body of my paragraph, I listed the positive impacts of inclusive education and I also quoted there the negative impact or basically the thoughts of experts about inclusive education that it does not automatically mean or it does not automatically give or provide positive results. Let me read to you one of the positive impacts of inclusive education according to the following experts. We have here, many studies have found that students with disabilities have gained higher achievement and improved their skills through inclusive education and their peers without challenges benefit too. Then we also have another contradicting opinion about inclusive education. It says that placing children who are hard of hearing in regular classrooms does not automatically facilitate meaningful social interaction, peer acceptance, positive inclusion, and or improvement in the children's social communication skills. Now it has two contradicting opinions about inclusive education. So once we already established the examined current data, the next thing that we're going to write to our audience is to show to them the areas of too little available information. In my case, uh, there's not much study about English teachers who do not have special education classes who handle students with hearing impairment. We all know that hearing impaired students have a delay in terms of their language development and English teachers who handle these kinds of students will have difficulty also strategizing their lessons in order for their students to cope up with their hearing peers. So this study will be talking about or will be generating the experiences of these teachers. Let me read to you the next paragraph. It says, English teachers who will handle inclusive education classes with students with hearing impairment will have a great challenge assessing and making students learn. These students face great difficulties in communicating and maintaining interactions with hearing peers in inclusive settings. So this is the content of our next paragraph or the main body of our paragraph. Just a review, the first thing that we're going to do is to examine the current data or to show the current data about your research study. May it be different studies that show the positive impact of it or another study that shows the negative impact of it, whatever research study you have. Then we also have after that is to show areas of too little available information. So we don't have enough research studies that talk about the experiences of English teachers who handle inclusive senior high school classroom with students with hearing impairment. So after we establish these things, the next part of our structure is to show how your research study fills in the gap in knowledge. In this part, we're going to share the purpose of the study and why it is important to work on this research topic. So this is how I wrote the last paragraph of my research introduction. In response to this step at Order 72 series of 2009, the Department of Education has organized the importance of giving equal privilege to everybody regarding education. So inclusive education guarantees that children with special needs have the right to receive appropriate training within the regular or, or inclusive classroom setting. In this light, the researcher explored on the idea of inclusion inside the classroom, how this helps learners to cope with their weaknesses and compensate on their strengths. Regular senior high schools in the northern part division might not be ready and well equipped in the necessary knowledge in providing education to students with special needs, especially in the senior high school curriculum, since most of the teachers do not have special education training. So this is how we do it. This is how we write our research introduction using the inverted pyramid structure technique. We shall start with the general information first, going to the most specific ones. The first part should show the what is already known or the general information. Make a strong statement that reflects your research subject area and explore the problem. The next part shows the gap in knowledge. You have to examine the current data or you have to show the current data. And at the same time, 
uh, right areas of too little available information. Once you already established this part, you can now proceed to the next part, which is showing how your research study fills in the knowledge gap. You have to tell the local of your study, you have to tell the purpose and why it is important to work on this study and how this helps your community. So I hope you have learned something out from this discussion. Thank you everyone. Uh, kindly comment below anything that you would like me to discuss in the future videos. Thank you and keep on learning.